Put your hands together for Joe and Ellie. Troy Baker. Lovely. Extra time on my hair. Yes, I did. Um, Many midgets had to die for my hair. <laughs> Don't ask the process. It just, it, it's from a, a unicorn tail. That's so stupid. A little bit of unicorn part. <laughs> you didn't even give it a chance. No, You're I like, I'll, I'll try to be funny. Now I'm gonna. Kill That's my hair, hair dryer. Is a unicorn farting. <laughs> Lots of beans I have to feed the unicorn. Gary is his name. <laughs> Gary the unicorn. Gary the unicorn. What does Gary the unicorn sound like, Troy? <laughs> uh, guys, we're all to a great start. <laughs> well, I think when you're talking about subject matter as serious as The Last of Us, it's always great to start with unicorn parts. <laughs> um, a two-part question for both of you to start off with. How does it feel to be in the best game ever on the PlayStation 3. <laughs> How does it feel to be in the upcoming best game ever on PlayStation 4? <laughs> I, you know, when we started making this, there's, sometimes you need to wait and see, and you need to, you know, uh, things start to have to kind of come together when you finally realize, oh, this is going to be something that's really, really good. When, we sat down and did the first little kind of um, Neil dropping and Bruce Straley, the creative directors. Uh, Woo! Both, yeah, absolutely. Both gave us like their pitch that they gave to Sony. They sat down and, and they said, "So we want to take you guys and walk you through the whole storyline. We've got some storyboards, some kind of uh, uh, concept art that we want to show you guys." And it was probably about an hour and a half, maybe I think. We were at uh, Culver Studios, which is where we shot the The Last of Us, and. Um, they get done, and they're like, and that's the end. And I was like, cool, so why don't we just uh, take five real quick, and you guys can go to the bathroom, whatever you need. We're like, yeah, cool, we're just gonna, just gonna go outside. And Ashley and I walked outside, and we're like, I'm gonna throw up. Um, I, I barfed in some bushes. It was, <laughs> I was like, oh my god. <laughs> because we knew then, and I, I looked at you, and I said, if this thing fails, it's because of us. Because there's no weakness in the story, there's no weakness. Clearly, Naughty Dog knows how to make a game, so we You knew... all the weakest link. Goodbye. Yeah, you <laughs> all the <laughs> weakest link. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it was, we, we felt pressure from the very, very beginning, but we knew from the very beginning that this was going to be a benchmark game. It was going to, this, was, this game was going to say something and it was going to mean something. And we just wanted to do our very best from the very beginning to make sure that we honored that and that we, uh, we could do our part to live up to it. And I think so far, I mean, people have, Especially with what Ellie did, it was, it was Ashley did. Sorry, <laughs> um, but yeah, might as well. Um, we, I think we, I think we said something in game. So, what you guys think? I mean, yeah. so then Ashley, how do you go from barfing in the bushes <laughs> to bringing Ellie to life? Because like, there's a lot of you in that character, isn't there? Yeah, I, I think um, you know. We worked on this for over, uh, over three years, yeah. almost four years. Well, it was about by the time the game finally came out, we were we were just a touch over three years because we started in November of 2000, um, 2010, yeah. and the game came out in June. Yeah. So I think over that period of time, um, I mean, already when I saw, you know, sort of the character's description for Ellie and the concept art, I was like, I. I'm, I'm, I am this girl, besides the fact that we're, <laughs> she's 14 and I'm not, um, <laughs> but I basically am like a 14 year old girl, because I'm super immature most of the time, <laughs> all the time, um, but yeah, I, I, um, um, how did I go from barfing to playing Ellie? <laughs> Is there a lot of character work I mean done with Neil? Like do you have long conversations with him as far as like what he thought it was and where you thought the character was? Yeah, he's Neil's amazing because I mean every every time we would have uh, a shoot day or he would give us, you know, the stuff that we were doing for the week, 
um, we would have a rehearsal day and we would get to talk about it with him and that was incredible because it's it's like even with other stuff that I've done you, you oftentimes you don't get the time to do that and so um, you know with Joel and with Ellie and all the we had a lot of time with Neil to sort of sit down and really talk about the characters and um, yeah, so we all were sort of able to create um, these people together, and... And that didn't just happen while we were shooting, too. I mean, Neil and Bruce both were so open. There were many conversations, like, I would have out on my balcony with Neil, and well into, like, late at night, going, really trying to suss out just these specific scenes and what they meant to the story and what they meant to the characters, and it was, it was that way with, with all of us, too. This wasn't just like, okay, let's punch in and, and, and do these scenes. These were conversations that were being had off-site and, and after hours, and uh, we, we lived with these characters. Um, not nearly as much as, as Neil and Bruce did for so long, but I mean, we would have conversations about this. And I, I the, the greatest thing that came out of this game and this experience uh, is, is, is this, um, because I, mean, I, I love her like a sister. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's Wait, a cool. Wait, what? Out of that. Out of that. That's cool. That's cool. But yeah, I mean, we, it's the relationships that we fostered. It's, it's, it's um, you know, the friendship that I have with Ashley, and it's the, the relationship and the friendship that I have with, with Neil and with Bruce that you can't, you can't replace those things. But yeah, there's a lot of time spent with character. So, for you, uh, like, for Ashley, bless you, bless you. <laughs> for <laughs> Ashley to Ellie, there's a lot of her in it, right? Just from the get-go. Even a 14-year-old girl, she's a 14-year-old girl, cover. Uh, for you, well, I mean, how do you get into a character like Joel? Like, he's, he's seen some shit. Oh, so, by a round of applause, who has not beaten The Last of Us? Oh, uh, yes! Yeah! Hey! Right. So, Troy, I imagine you've never had your daughter shot in front of you, killed, oh. die in your arms. Like, how do you get into that mindset? That you know of. Uh, it's so funny. I mean, when I walked in uh, to, to, for, for the meeting, the first meeting on this, I, I said straight away, I was like, so anybody want to talk about the white elephant in the room? Um, the fact that I am the youngest person that you're seeing for this. And even though, and if, you, if you guys see the, the Grounded documentary, which is brilliant. It's free on Amazon. You have no free, excuse. Yeah, so it's, it's so good. And it's it's such a great, it's kind of, you may watch King of Kong, that documentary. Woo! Okay. <laughs> I mean, this, this is not necessarily this demographic for all those people who didn't care about Donkey Kong. Um, but anybody who, who, even if you don't like arcade games, it doesn't matter. That story is so compelling. And so obviously here we're all fans of video games. But if you ever wanted a great cross-section of what it takes to, to create a game from the ground up and, and, and the process that goes into it, it's, it's so compelling and so uh, interesting to watch. But when I walked in, I was like, I... I know who this guy is, but you need to get past all this. And there was one specific line in, in the audition sides in the character description, because they'll tell you how tall he is, and um, they'll give you a little brief background and what he means to the story kind of thing. But there was nothing about him being from Texas that I remember um, that just was who Joel was to me. And um, there was one line in there that says he has few moral lines left to cross. And that to me, more than anything, was the the Rosetta Stone that unlocked everything for me because what does that mean to a man for that to be able to be said about him? If, if you have few moral lines left across, you've seen some shit. And, and there, he's, he's just a, when, whenever we started shooting and stuff, I mean, we have, <laughs> we had so much fun and we had so much levity and there were so many jokes and Ashley's whole thing, we, we would shoot the scene and then, <laughs> We would have to do a audio pass, um, just like separate it off so we could get clean audio just in case we needed to use it. And they would always say, okay guys, uh, this is a wild take. And out of nowhere, Ashley said this. We're going wild! <laughs> <laughs> and then like it turned into this weird thing, like I had a cauldron in front of me and I was like stirring something. <laughs> I think because we would just get really loopy and tired. I was like, we're going wild! <laughs> like, okay guys, we're good, we're good, and normally like on film you would say check in the gate, which means we're basically moving on, we're just making sure there's nothing wrong with the camera or whatever, and it was like, okay guys, I think that's it, Ashley, and she's like, we're going on! <laughs> so, we had all this fun, but it was to offset the fact that um, 
that we did some really heavy work. And uh, whenever you step into that role of Joel, um, people, and I, we said this before in other panels, like, do the voice of Joel! It's like, well, that, it's not just like a voice that I do. That's, it's, there's a character that is Joel. He's a person to me that exists. And when you slip into that, there's, that's just how you sound. It's not like I'm doing a voice right now. It's talking like me, and it's kind of the same thing. I know that sounds really Meisner and kind of actory, high heady, but it, it's the truth. And, and Joel is heavy, heavy, heavy. And that scene specifically, again, if you watch the Grounded uh, documentary, that, that, that scene messed with me, man. It, it really jacked me up. Um, I, I was done by the end of the day, and, and I, I remember sitting walking off stage and, and uh, going outside of the parking lot and calling my wife and just, I mean, I, when, you, when you decide that you're gonna jump over that fence that your mind puts up to protect yourself from all the... Um, Mute your fucking phones. Shit, dude. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we experience trauma in our life. And we're, we're there in it, and then your brain just kind of builds this moat and this fence around it and says, okay, you never have to deal with this again. And then when you're an actor, you're like, you want to connect yourself to real things you've experienced because you've never had shot your daughter, you know, had your daughter shot and die in your arms, so you're trying to connect it to something real. So, like an idiot, you jump over that fence and start going, I wonder what's in here. <laughs> and you tap dance on the minefield of your mind. And if you're not really skilled, it'll, you blow up. And, and I was a wreck. I was, I was sobbing uncontrollably. And I remember about third take through, um, Hannah Hayes, who played Sarah, was, I mean, good God, she's so good. She's so good. And she was so in touch with her feelings and able to turn it on and turn it off. It's crazy. But it was like third take in, and I remember looking back at Neil. I was like, okay, guys, let's get ready. We're going to go again. And I just looked at Neil, and I was like, this is really hard. And it was, it was a very revealing moment about me. And then to shoot all that, and then two weeks later, Neil goes, so we need to reshoot a scene. <laughs> like, no! And I was mad at him. I was pissed. And then he showed me what kind of actor I could be. And I'm, I'm eternally grateful to him for that. And I, he, he taught me so much with a very gentle hand about getting past your ego and getting past wanting to prove something to people um, in a scene because the second that you do that you're out of it and uh, it was great and, and so what you actually see the result that that moment how it hits you uh, happens not because of me but in spite of myself and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's one of the greatest moments I've ever had as an actor it was great I don't know how we got into that thank you Is this, where does this fall on as far as like an intense project to work on in terms of like what you're giving to? <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's up there. I would say it's a, it's maybe a, a top, a top three. I mean, I've, I've worked on some, you know, independents that, you know, sort of deal with, um, you know, really intense stuff, but um, I think because this was over, we shot this over a long period of time, um, and sort of, you know, at the end of every shoot day, because the scenes were intense, it's not like we, we left, you know, feeling good at the end of the day. <laughs> but, you know, there was something... I'll see you next week. Yeah. <laughs> like, especially after, you know, when we shot all of the winter section of the game. Um, I, <laughs> I remember I was, a friend of mine was graduating and I went to her graduation and Neil had sent me, you know, the 30 pages that was going to be the winter section. And so I was waiting for her, at, I think I was at TGI Fridays, and <laughs> I was just sitting in the... Not one pop for TGI Fridays, <laughs> sure, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why that was the chosen place, but whatever. And um, I was sitting in the in the you know waiting area waiting for everybody. And I was just like, oh, I'll just read like a couple pages to see what we're working on next week. And then I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, 
oh, dang, okay. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> and I kept going, and then I was just crying by the end of it, and then everybody got there, they were like, are you okay? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm really excited to be at Applebee's. Yeah. <laughs> Can we get some more drinks? <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, now that I think about it, this was probably one of the most intense things that I've worked on. I think because it, it was such a long period of time, and because I'm so attached to the game, and to Ellie, and the characters, and I just love this world so much. So I think it, that adds a whole other level. Travis, I mean, same kind of answer for you. Like you, you do so many video games. On top of this, you know, this is coming out right around Bioshock. You're working on both games at the same time, another intense game. Yeah, you definitely have to kind of compartmentalize your mind because you don't want to have the stories bleed over into the next. And, and so you, it's, it's important that you have like this, um, again, like you have an, uh, an anchor point that you can kind of always come back to. Um, and with Joel, it was, you know, that one thing. And with Booker, it was another. So you kind of like remind yourself of those things. And I really try to, to shut off um, because... It's easy to get wrapped up in life. It's easy to get wrapped up and you gotta pay your bills and you've got this going on on Tuesday and you really have to just shut everything else off because there's a, there's a whole entire world that you're stepping into and these characters are so real that you have to keep them real and you have to keep engaged. And Travis Williams got a great example. He's kind of like, you know, if you ever watch a football game, you know, all those guys are up there and they're like hitting their chest and they're like, I'm gonna take you down, all this stuff, and they're like laughing and joking and everything, but as soon as that ball is set, they go, set, and all of them go, and it's laser focused, and everything else, those fans, everything go bye-bye, and you're here. And the reason why they're doing that whole, yeah, what's up, all that stuff before, is because you cannot maintain that laser focus for that long. Try to clench your fist for an hour, you can't do it. You need to relax, you need to let the... I'm gonna do it. I'm oh, doing sorry. it. I'm doing it next hour. For this whole panel, I'm gonna do it. The muscles are strengthened by us, you know, constricting and retracting, constricting and retracting. So, it's you have to let those moments go. And so we did have fun on set, and we, we kept it light and lively as much as we could. But when it was like, okay, pictures up, whew, we were in it and we we're laser focused. And that, you know, there, there's there's moments in every game where you have where you get to have a lot of levity and you get to play around and this is just kind of those you know you know knock around scenes kind of thing but we didn't really have those every scene mattered there wasn't one single wasted word and um and so that it's it was the most intense thing I've, I've, I've ever had to work on it was the hardest thing i've ever done and you know it, it's it cost us a lot it cost us a lot and uh by the end of it you know you the reason why you put in the work it's not just because of your integrity, um, and it's not because of the benefit you get out of it, but you're so excited to work on something that you know is good. And every actor just wants that one thing where they can go, I did that. And I, I, I've been fortunate enough to be part of some amazing projects, but The Last of Us will always be very special to me. Um, because I was such a Naughty Dog fan, such a huge Uncharted fan, all I wanted to do was die in Uncharted. That's all I wanted to do, just be a red shirt. He goes, <coughs> and get killed by Nate. Um, <laughs> that's it. And that was like what really wanted me to get into video games too. So it's, it's like there's, there's, there's a lot that Naughty Dog specifically means to me. And, and, and again, the relationships that, we, that came out of it. So it's all of those things you're like, no matter what this costs me, I'm gonna finish this and I want it to be good. So, um, so yeah, it was, it, but it was definitely, like you said, one of the most intense things that we've ever done, ever, ever. So you both, you, you in particular, thought we're really worried about people hating you, right? Yes. Yeah. This first person shooter protagonist that speaks all of a sudden. Knowing, going in, what The Last of Us is going to be by the end of it, were either of you worried about reaction or reception to who you are and what your characters were? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think specifically with the ending, when, when Neil told us the ending, both of us were like, I mean, I, you were, you loved it. Yeah. You wrestled I, with it at first. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I kind of wrestled with it, but at the same time, I was like, Neil has such an amazing vision for, you know, what he wants to do and, and as a writer and as a director. And so, I feel 
feel like both of us were just so trusting of him. You know, so when he was like, this is the ending, I was like, okay, yeah, okay, <laughs> let's do it. I think with both of us too, you know, right around the same time was when um, Mass Effect 3 um, had come out, which is an amazing game. Um, yeah, uh, and go Femshep. But they had the whole debacle with the ending, and it, it was such an interesting moment for games because it, the response of the fans prompted an action and a response from the developer, um, which I, I commend them for doing. But at the same time, um, this is my opinion, I much more respect a company who says, no, this is our story and this is the end. We're not gonna let you choose because we believe in the ending so much. And all I cared about was, was not whether people liked it or hated it or loved it or hated it. I just didn't want them to be ambivalent about it. And I haven't met one person who was like, eh. Everyone was like, I hated it. I didn't want that to happen. Or I loved it. It was the most perfect, honest ending that, that you could have. Um, but I just didn't want people to be ambivalent about it. Um, and I have to say this about Neil, too. Maybe a lot of people don't know this. This is his first directing job. First. <laughs> he, he stepped up to the plate more than anybody in this thing because there, there was a change that needed to happen and so he, he's like, I guess I'm gonna do this. And he didn't just go, okay, I'm gonna direct this and like full of himself or ego or arrogance at all. He went and he read books and he studied classes. He took acting classes. Even though he was not an actor, didn't wanna be an actor. He wanted to understand the process. He completely immersed himself in this process and he gave his life over to this thing so that it could be the best that it could be. And if that was his first job, damn. <laughs> Damn, he's the best director I've ever worked with. Because, I mean, that's... <laughs> See, for me, it always, this point devolves into game theory, right? Of what we're talking about. The fact that Mario, right, in spot, and Neil plays that, or he plays whatever old games he played to get to where he is now. I make this thing where, I don't know if you understand this in the audience, five years ago, panels like this didn't happen, Ooh. and nobody knew who voiced games nobody or cared. directed or wrote them because it didn't matter. And now we're at this point in video games where we really are, we've left the launch pad. Right. Things are changed different now. Things have changed. You care who plays your games, you care who writes your games. It's major news stories when it happens, right? And so, Imagine the seven-year-old, eight-year-old, nine-year-old who shouldn't be playing it because it's rated them for mature, but is <laughs> But they're playing this, you know what I mean? Last of Us is someone's first video game. Jesus. In 30 years, what are they going to be creating in this space? And that's when you get to the point of like, it's over. It's all changed. You know what I mean? Like I always talk about, and I will let them talk because I know you can't see them. I always talk about, you know, video game violence in Congress and all that stuff. That's going to die out when those senators die, and they all need to die because. <laughs> president who had an NES and played through, you know, played all these video games and did all these things and understands what the medium is and what it can be. And right now, tip of the sword right now with this kind of stuff. This, Walking Dead, Bioshock. There's games that are changing the way we think about video games. Well, I'll also say that if we have a president like Frank Underwood from House of Cards, then this whole gaming thing will not be a problem. <laughs> we have bigger fish to fry them. Alright, so Ashley, you said that, you know, the only difference between you and Ellie was the age gap. So were you surprised to find out you're gay? <laughs> Greg Miller. Greg Miller, ladies and gentlemen. Now, what about, what, what, that, cause, like, what, the, correct me if I'm wrong, when you recorded the first part of the game, when you, the real game, the disc game that came out before the DLC, Yeah. Was it ever expressed to you what the Riley relationship was going to be or what it had become? Uh, no. Um, we hadn't discussed that and I feel like American Dreams, I feel like the, that whole series was developed a little bit, almost halfway through the game? They started writing it, well, 
mean, halfway through a shooting, so I mean, more like yeah. two years into production. Yeah. I know, I, know, I know Neil always, and he's also got another graphic novel that he did before he did Last of Us, um, Second Chance for Sarah, mm -hmm. um, ironically. Um, he needs to come up with more character names. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, 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 but that, the I knew he always wanted to do a graphic novel, but it came much later into, into a shooting. Yeah, and I, I, it, ha it hadn't been discussed um, when we shot the, uh, the game. And then when Neil thought of the idea for the DLC, and then he came out um, and we went to, I met him at work, and we went to lunch, and he's like, okay, I'm gonna tell you the idea for the DLC, and um, I, he's like, okay, so, he's like, I wanna ask you something. He's like, um, a lot of people have asked me if Ellie is gay. Um, he's like, and what are your thoughts on that? And I was like, oh, I, I was like, that's actually something that I haven't, I haven't thought of, which usually when I do character work with anything, um, I always sort of prepare, you know, what the character's sexual preference is and all this other stuff, but for some reason, just with Ellie, because of the circumstances of being in this world, this post-apocalyptic world, I didn't, I, I hadn't thought about it yet. Um, and I said, well, let me, let me, let me think about this. He's like, because I want, I sort of, I want to have this story in the DLC. And I was like, okay. Um, and so kind of, you know, a couple weeks, I was thinking about it, and, you know, when we got back together, I was like, yeah, of course. I love this, I, I love this story, and I love that Riley is, you know, her first love, um, and I'm on board. So, you go through all that, you film it, it comes out. Were you prepared for the reaction? Like, it's one of those things where there were so many opinion pieces and blogs and every tweets, you know what I mean, written about how this touched people in a way they didn't expect it to, you know what I mean? Whether it be that this, this is, I, so many, I saw so many tweets and so many letters to like Podcast Beyond that this is my story, you know what I mean? Without meaning to, right. they told my story of how I discovered them, who I was. Yeah, I think I, I was more prepared for the negative comments um, because we're sort of so used to that anyway, and like because anybody- Because the internet. <laughs> because the interwebs. Um, yeah. And yeah, so I was more prepared for people to be like, no, Ellie's not gay, or um, just, I feel, I knew that there was gonna be negativity with that. Um, but I, I, I think I was a little less prepared for the impact that it would have for a lot of teens or anybody that they are gay. And I, like, I've seen so many videos on YouTube, and this one girl in particular, and I was just talking to her the other day, and I cannot remember her name, and she posted the video, and it was her playthrough, and her first realization is when they're in the photo booth. And she's watching, and she, she you know, put her hand over her mouth, and she goes, oh, wait a minute. And then, like as it as it went on, and then you know after the kiss, and she just broke down, and she paused, and she's like, "I gotta stop this for a second. If I would have been able to play this when I when I was this age, this would have made life easier for me." And I just completely broke. <laughs> I hate crying in front of people. No one look at her. <laughs> Um, I can't believe I'm crying. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> it's just it, it really means a lot to be in something that you know means a lot to a certain you know community or um, to just anybody. Like to be a part of something that that was important to someone is an awesome feeling. And I, I think I think I'm crying because I, I we shouldn't have done the autographs beforehand because I got to meet some of you where you all said such amazing things and so it's your fault. <laughs>
Well, it's your fault to be, continue to make her cry, so if we can start having people line up here for Q&A. We got a mic, I think, over there. Yeah, it's already happening. Look at that. Oh, my God, they're being mocked. They're all clickers. Oh, look at how, oh, look how many people came. Oh, holy shit. Thank God the lights are not on came out. Oh, hi. hi. So I saw the video of Neil, and he asked Merle to start singing when you're filming the last scene. I have to ask. What was your perspective and what were you thinking, like, when she started singing? Has everyone seen this video? Oh. They leaked. It was the, uh, <laughs> oh, the alternate ending? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were the ball, ball suits and it was, yeah, they played a prank on you, right? Wasn't what's, it? what's so great, the saddest thing is that Ashley wasn't there that day. And <laughs> if you look, um, you, you couldn't be there, I can't remember what it was, but we needed, obviously we needed an Ellie on the table. So, the, the chick that I'm holding is my wife. <laughs> so great. And my wife has zero poise whatsoever. So, if you look, she is trembling because she's laughing so hard. And just trying not to bust the tape. But yeah, Neil comes up to me and he was like, just don't, don't break. You know, whatever happens, I, I want you to keep going through it. I know you've dropped the gun. I was like, dude, I'm not going to drop the gun. I swear to God, I'm not going to drop the gun. I just, like, no matter what, I was like, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> do this for a while. I'm a professional. <laughs> and Merle comes out, and I mean, I, I knew that Merle had, uh, I mean, she she was on Rent, uh, um, she's a legit actor, and, and, a, and an incredible singer, but that's the first time I ever heard her sing. So, when you see me kind of go, it's not, oh, this is happening, because at that point, guys, Anything was up for, for the day. I wasn't expecting anything. Just I'm saying in any scene on any day. I was so blown away by how good she was. So I'll go, oh shit, we're doing this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and I'm just, I mean, I'm a little off anyway. So I thought it was so no. great. And it was, we needed a moment like that too. And as soon as we stopped, and they didn't know that I was going to go with it that day. They, they were expecting me to break or just kind of go, uh, these are my lines. Uh, I was like, oh, you want to dance? Let, let's get it. Um, the only thing is, and the original idea was to fully animate it. Um, I know. And, and then, you know, after much deliberation, they decided they should probably just make the game. <laughs> Put the game out. That's um, why it was delayed. It was a weird decision by the brass, you know. Um, but I would still love to see that happen. I mean, if we could just, you know, have the hundreds of thousands of dollars in resources that it costs to have that little joke done. But yeah, it was it was great. I'm, I'm glad that people liked it. Thank you. Thank you. I understand it takes a whole team of people to bring these sort of characters to life. Yes. When that happens, what's it like seeing these characters knowing that you helped bring them to life and fully realize them? Oh my god. <laughs> Humbling. Humbling. I mean, hello, I'm crying in front of a bunch of people. <laughs> I think, have you ever been to the Grand Canyon? Yeah. Okay. You know when you stand out at the, like you're so jazzed to be there, and then you actually stand and you take in the magnitude of it all, and you realize how small you are? Yeah. Um, that's the same feeling. When you, when you look and you see, you meet face to face all these people, like, oh, but this was the, this is Tal, he's the guy who's been literally looking at the reference video and matching every little nuance, every idiosyncrasy that you gave, a raised eyebrow, a furrow, whatever, he's been making that Joel. And this is the lighting guy, this is the shading guy, this is the, you know, I mean, all these different people, and you go, I am a wheel within the cog, within the machine. It's, that's what I love about video games. With movies, it's starring blah blah blah, which is great. And I love that, that games have started to recognize the actors in it more. It's, 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 a, it's a great honor. But I'm not just the voice. But I'm not the character. That, that is a result of several people uh, really, really giving their lives over to us. I'm glad that you recognize that. And I, I, the only thing I can say is that's incredibly humbling. All right. Thank you. Okay, um, I actually have uh, two requests. One of them, the last of us, and the other one uh, for Troy. It's uh, Persona 4 related. Like, you know, 
Greg, do you mind if I just like do? I was gonna say you only get one question, but if it's Persona Four related, please. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, for for both of them, uh, this is the thing. Okay. Um, uh, you may remember um, us from the yes autograph signing. So, um, I want to hear you you do the um the your try on some eat the nice better. Replace Ellie with uh, Kayla just for, just for my friend Andrew here because. What do you want me to do? Um, the, 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 the blimber is just like, and I'm going to try to imitate the potato right now, but... Okay. Ellie, you're trying to bounce some mighty thin ice. Like, I want to hear that one, but replace Ellie with Kayla. Just, just for him. Just for him, man. Kayla, you're trying to some mighty thin ice. <laughs> the second one, the, okay, now the Persona 4 one. Make it quick. Okay. Long story short, Persona 4 the animation, I I watched episode 7 of it so many times, and it was for the one line with Shadow Ganji. And it was the one with the... The bump and grind line. If you remember that one at all. I don't see nothing wrong with a little bump and grind. <laughs> that, that, like, <laughs> but like, in, in, like, in character, I just want to hear, hear that just really quickly, one take. And then I'll go. Bump and grind. There we go. Thank you. Hi. 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 So, uh, I want to know if, like, what was your most favorite line or scene or anything you did in the making of the game, and not the alternate ending. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of my favorite scenes is when I was on set, but I wasn't in the scene. Um, and I mean, I mean, sure, such an amazing actor, but I think it was just one of the times where I just completely got chills, um, which is the scene where he goes, where he's trying to find Ellie in the winter section, and then he's sitting with the with the guys, and he's like trying to get, you know, them to give him an answer, and then he stabs a guy in the knee, and he's like, "Where is it?" And he puts the you know pen in his mouth, and he's like, "Where is it?" <laughs> Way better than that, obviously. Um, <laughs> and for some reason, that is one of my favorite scenes. And I think because that day, I was just, you know, hanging out in a little side area. And Troy was just so in the moment and so terrifying and, and just completely into it with every fiber of his being. And I was just like, oh, is he going to tell him? <laughs> And then he's gonna go over there, and then he's gonna kill that guy after he says it's true. And then, um, I love that scene. But I, I think my favorite scene is in the bedroom um, with the two of us um, when he's like, when I'm talking to him about, hey, I know about your daughter. And then he has the treading on Mighty Thin Ice line. I love that scene. Yeah, just so you guys can understand very briefly, so I want to make sure we do answer questions. Um, but that was that was a, a very big moment for us as as a team to come together because every once in a while you're going to hit a scene, or sometimes more often than not, you're going to hit a scene that's just not working, and it's there's no reason for it not to. There's not a problem with the dialogue. There's not a problem with the blocking. There's not a problem with motivation. Everybody understands what they're supposed to do. It's just not clicking, and that was one of those days where Ashley and I both were like, it just doesn't. It doesn't feel right. It feels like we're still scratching the surface and that we're not really getting to the real conversation. And we went through it, I mean, like five, six, seven, eight times. And finally looked at Neil, I was like, can I just, can I just take a five, right? He was like, take 10. And I went over to the side and, and Neil came over and he talked to me a little bit, talked to Ash a little bit. And we were mad. We were like genuinely frustrated and angry. And we came back in and Ashley was different. She was like, let's go, let's do this. And we come in and we do the scene, and Ashley, when she says, everybody in my life has left everybody except fucking except for you, and she pushes me, that wasn't scripted, that wasn't written, that was just her being in the moment, and as soon as she did that, I mean, it was, we were laser focused in that together, and it was such a great scene, and I love that scene because of that, because it's, it came as a result of all of us working really, really hard when we could have just accepted, okay, 
nobody quit. And we, we stayed in it until it was it was right and it was perfect. Um, so that's that's probably my favorite scene too. Right, thanks a so bunch. to play your characters in a movie version of The Last of Us. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I've talked about this on, on Twitter, um, and it was really funny, because I someone asked me, and I was like, well, Maisie Williams would be awesome. Um, just I'm, such a, I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan, and just sort of the idea of the character that she plays, obviously, Varya is, I feel like, pretty similar to, to Ellie. Um, and then she started following me on Twitter, and I was like, oh my god! <laughs> um, I was so excited. Um, and, but, or else, somebody who is not even an actor, just somebody, somebody new, would be really cool too. But I think I would prefer if they would get a 14-year-old, and not like a 20-year-old that's playing 14. <laughs> I... For me, from the very beginning, Josh Brolin has always been like a, a, a look to. Um, I've actually sat and talked to him about it before too, and I, I would love for Josh Brolin to be the person. But um, there's been a few other people that have brought some some other interesting uh, options up. And at the end of the day, um, I'm, I really do trust. I know that Neil and, and Bruce have have influence on that, and I know they're going to have the right person in there. And again, I don't want them to cast someone because. They're a name. Uh, I want them to cast them because they're right. Um, no offense at all, but like, uh, I don't necessarily look at Jennifer Lawrence and think Katniss. Um, well, okay, I really just is struck a nerve with this one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Troy Baker is about playing the cat. There, there were two applauses and like 40 gun cockings. It's like, or bow poles. You know what I mean? I, 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 want it, I want them to find the right person for it, regardless of if they have uh, cachet. I just want them to, to understand at the end of the story and this ought to be a gig. Um, and I want to be a clicker and, and die. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, my question is, as emotional as The Last of Us was, how did it change you, not just as voice actors going forward, but as people? <laughs> Man, I, I, meeting this kid over here has changed my life in so many ways. I mean, he really is like my brother, um, and just one of my best friends. Um, yeah, it, uh, it, but it's, it's, it's so cry. <laughs> And you know, I and I think that's why we're so connected with it because I think some people could be like, okay, everybody, calm down. But it's just like we're we're such a family, and um, we're all just so attached to each other. And um, I, I, yeah. You you learn something from every experience, from every opportunity that you're given, right? Um, I really grew as an actor because of this, and I've already said the relationships that we've had. Um, but this this changed me because I finally understood um, what it's like to really be committed and grounded into a character, and not just, just do the work, but actually live it. Um, and that, that's, it's forever changed me. Um, it, it's made me focus more on the craft of, of storytelling and, and how to write and tell a story. I don't want to be a writer, but I want to study the, the, the art of writing because uh, I think it helps me understand more about what I do. And so whatever you want to do in life, understand that, like especially if you want to become an actor, you better get really, really comfortable with reading. I have five books right now that I have to read, just like homework for projects that I'm doing because I want to understand the character or the world that I'm in or something else because it's always based in something. So. Don't think that if you want to become an actor or a musician or whatever, that you just don't get to do homework because it never, ever ends. You're always going to have to do something. You always have to study to show thyself approved, you know what I mean? So, um... But it's yeah. fun homework. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great work, it's fun, but it's still hard. It's really, really hard, and you're going to find yourselves, like, we've gotten the best weapons training because of doing games. Um, like, I'm serious, man. Like on Shadow of Mordor, I got to learn about swords. Um, I've gotten to ride, you know, learn how to ride horse and become like a really fond uh, lover of horseback riding and, and guns, shooting every kind of gun. It's great. Um, so there's benefits to it, but 
it's not just a walk in the park. It's not just this, this is something that costs you. And, and sometimes we work 26 hours a day to, to, to give you guys something that we'll be proud of, that you'll be proud of as well. So. And side note, another thing, because I turned into a freaking bubbling mess, bubbling, I can't even, I'm going to make up words, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think another thing, because after the DLC, um, I think it's it's influenced my life so much more because so, I get so many um, so many comments from people um, that have had sort of a hard time in school, which I was one of those people, and I think that's why it means so much to me to be, you know, having that response of, of someone saying like, "Hey, this is helping me through," or "This is making things a little bit easier for me," and that has been so unbelievably rewarding and has wasn't there before I did this game, you know? So that's one another thing. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Charlie. I don't made your bracelets, but Hi Charlie. I don't know, no, that's Leah. <laughs> she made these. <laughs> you did this? I can see you. Wait, no, not this, this. <laughs> you made my watch? You made my watch. Um you're you're still here, right? You're in the dealer's booth, and it's it's geek outlet. Or, 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 yeah, uh, uh, and it's geeks. Geek outlet. Geek outlet. She made this with her hands. <laughs> They're emblazoned with the firefly. Girl, please go visit her and support her because she does incredible. Mine is personally initial, not to brag. <laughs> <laughs> and, and by the way, like you literally changed my life. So. <laughs> but, Leah bought me The Last of Us for Father's Day last year. Oh, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, my daughter's middle name is Sarah. Oh. And she's, and she's old. So this is all, this was all pre, you know, the game. But uh, the effect that it had on me as a father, I have three kids and a the effect that it had on me as a father was so dramatic and so deeply personal. Uh, it's the most personal game I've ever played. And to think that there are people that I've never met who all work together to make something that talked to me on such a personal, individual level was just astounding. But I wanted to know, how do you feel that playing Joel will affect your being a father? Oh my god. <laughs> We've all experienced loss um, on some level. And what I learned through not only making it, but also playing it, because those are two different experiences. We, <laughs> we sat and we played through that together in my house the night after the launch party, and, and it was a surreal moment for both of us. But we were both absolutely devastated by the end of it, not because we were so proud of our performances, which we were, but we were experiencing it just like a player. But I've experienced loss in my life before, and to even be able to glimpse behind that curtain and understand what the most horrific loss could ever be has, just to even understand what that means from an empathetic level, uh, changed who I thought I could be as a father. Um, I'm, a, I'm a selfish guy, you know, and that taught me that when that happens to you, when, when, when you create a life and you bring it into this world, that is truly the point, that's the greatest accomplishment you could ever have, is to bring something into this world and have it go out to take all the best parts of you and, and none of the bad, hopefully, and, and spread that throughout the world. That's, that's the greatest accomplishment you could have, in my opinion. So what it showed me is that to understand that loss and to understand the impact that it would have on me is that I, I can be a good dad and I will be a good dad. Um, and I, I'm, I'm really touched that that had that impact on you. You guys have been talking a lot about this relationship on set and <laughs> being brother and sister, but like the character obviously is more like father, like he's, he's your dad or whatever. Yeah, he's definitely, um, definitely Ellie's only father figure that she's ever had. Is he a good dad? He's a great dad. In fact, Oh snap. Oh snap. 
So there, there's a present for you. So even though uh, Joel was not Ellie's father, um, he was definitely uh, someone very important to her and basically like a dad. So here's a mug for you. <laughs> I smell your uh, coffee. <laughs> no, I'm not clear what I'm going to put in this, but that's amazing. I hope this doesn't make your other kids jealous, though. Uh -oh. uh, and, and, and. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Courtney Draper. <laughs> succeeded a few times, spoiler alert, you may be um, adopted dad, but you're my real dad. So I also wanted to give you a best dad ever. What's, what's great is that on one side it says best, and of course on the other it says worst. <laughs> well, there are two sides to everything. Constants episode. and variables. Exactly. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, here's Jen from Momocon. Uh, not only are these gifts for sure, and they're gifts you can get your hands on. These guys are going to sign them. She's going to explain all about it. <laughs> hey this guys! This is amazing. You guys um, are awesome. Like Rick said, my name is Jen. Um, I'm with Momocon, and these items are actually going to be signed and auctioned off oh, um, after the convention. So if you want to find out more information, please, please, please go visit our website at momocon.com, or you can also visit Facebook. And we're going to go ahead and have more information on these items, plus a lot of other items um, that are going up for auction. So, awesome. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, that is The Last of Us panel. Give a big round of applause to The Last of Us on PS4 right now. It's coming eventually. This is the podcast we have every Tuesday. Watch the videos every Wednesday. I'm Troy Baker, and I've got a nerdy mind. I'm Ashley Johnson and I play Ellie in The Last of Us and I have a nerdy mind.